In this video, I want to do a software demonstration of some work we've been doing to support Dexy. Now, if you're not familiar with Dexy, this is offered by uh, DroneBlocks. I've been working on DroneBlocks for many years now, but we've released this Dexy drone. It's an official PX4 dev kit, and uh, we partnered with Arc Electronics. Arc has done some really cool stuff in bringing PixHawk, Pi CM4 and Optical Flow all into a single board. But one of the challenges that we've been up against is trying to make uh, programming a lot easier. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, PX4 1.15, it went live this week, which is amazing. And we've been doing uh, some simulation work basically to make it easier to understand how to program uh, SIDL, software in the loop simulation, as well as Dexy. So what you see here are some nodes that I've developed. Uh, this is all in GitHub. I'll be sure to share a link to it. And these nodes make it easy to uh, access the ROS2 uh, bridge to be able to tap into uh, PX4 navigation. Now, this flow that I've developed, I'm going to walk through in this video. And it's really all about understanding offboard control. Since Dexy is designed to fly indoors in a GPS denied environment, if you will, uh, we're using optical flow. And so we'll be sending commands to uh, engage offboard mode, take off, uh, navigate around, and land. With that being said, let me uh, show you a couple of images that we pushed. We have a PX4 SIDL image and then a Dexy node red image. I've fired up the PX4 SIDL environment. I've built this on top of an existing project that's uh, super cool. It allows you to access a ROS2 and Gazebo, all of that through sort of a VNC web-based environment. And we have PX4 already cloned in here. I'm going to go ahead and do make PX4 SIDL GZ X500. So that will bring up our simulated drone here in gazebo then i will also run the micro dds agent we'll do that udp port 8888 so that's connected to siddle you can see the clients pushing out these uh, ross topics if you will and then finally i'm going to run the ross bridge what this will allow us to do is bridge into this environment. Hang on, let me get this command right. Rossbridge will allow us to access our environment uh, through a web socket. So that's what uh, Node-RED will connect to. These topics will be exposed and then we'll be able to do off-board control. So let me go back to my flow. You'll see here already that it demonstrates that we're connected. So we have this web socket running on port 9090. This IP is the actual IP of my Docker container, the one that I just showed you where PX4 SIDL is running. So I have that set up. And what, what happens is when you do the configuration, all of these topics are exposed to us. So that allows us to publish and subscribe. And on top of this, I've developed just a, a basic dashboard. You're not, if you're not familiar with Node-RED dashboards, this is a third-party add-on. It allows for a visual interface. And I'm going to go to Dashboard, go to this link, and you can see here that we have uh, different buttons. These buttons are tied to various nodes in my flow. And I'm going to walk through this from top to bottom. So one of the things that we need to do for Offboard to work is send a heartbeat message to the FMU in offboard control mode topic. So the, this message is pretty standard. It's an object that has a, a position property with a value of true. I'm going to be doing a position control. That means I'll be publishing those set points to the trajectory set point topic. We'll begin sending the heartbeat. I'm sending here at 10 hertz. I believe the minimum for this to work is, is two hertz, if I recall correctly. And then here I'll just demonstrate. We have uh, the ability to set uh, different flight modes. So for example, if you look at here at my dashboard, it says our current flight mode is four. Not entirely sure what that is off the top of my head, but let me just click stabilize mode. You can see here that it goes to 15. 
So inside of this, we have uh, a payload here of just the command of 176. Param 1 is 1, and Param 2 is 7. Now, you might be wondering what all that means. I, I had to sort of decipher this by going to some of these links in the PX4 repository. You can see here, for example, here's a loiter. We send the command do set mode, a value of 1, a custom main mode auto, and then custom sub mode auto loiter. So if we look at loiter, which is also known as hold, you'll see these different parameters in this object. So 176 is the command, 1, 4, and 3. So that sort of applies to all of these inject nodes, if you will. I have these different uh, commands decoded. This is arm, then we have disarm, and then finally land. Now don't get overwhelmed by this. I'm certainly going to uh, share this flow so you can just get this up and running and, and take a look for yourself. Now I'll move down to the set point. And these will do our local navigation, take off right, left, forward, and back. Let's look at the FMU in trajectory set point topic. It tells us that the message type is trajectory set point. If you're not familiar with PX4 messages, I highly encourage you to just go uh, study either the docs or the uh, repo. And here I am in the documentation. You can see all the different message types, but specifically trajectory set point. We see here we have a position, velocity, acceleration, jerk, yaw, and yaw speed. This will be in the NED, the northeast down local frame. I'll go back and take a look at takeoff to give an example of this format. So you'll notice we are using the position type, north, which would be forward is zero, east, which would be right is zero, and then down, which is our Z, will be a negative 2.5. So a minus value means going up and a positive value means going down. So that is takeoff. Let's take a look at right. In this case, we have a zero, for north or forward, a one for east, which is right. So that's going to go one meter to the right. And then a minus 2.5, we're just staying at the same altitude. I don't know, that's roughly six to seven feet above the ground. Then left, instead of a positive east value, we're using a negative. So that tells it to go negative or left one meter. And then let me just demonstrate forward and back. Forward will be a north, so that's one. I'm using a minus one for the E here for, for east. That means uh, left. I know this is a bit confusing, but one thing I'll mention is you'll, you'll notice that these values are, are somewhat hard-coded, right? So what that means is that uh, when we're working with a local coordinate system, if I were to, for example, take off, and then go right. If I were to click the right button again, this position is relative to the takeoff location, so it won't move anywhere else. What we actually need to do, and I'll cover this in the future, is subscribe to another topic to get the vehicle's current position, and then we can offset from there. So what you'll see in the demonstration is we'll go takeoff, right, left, forward, and back, and lastly, in our flow, I have a subscription here. I'll demonstrate how this works. So I'll drag this subscribe node out to the canvas. When we select our WebSocket server, we have access to all of these different topics. And I'm subscribing to the FMU out. Out means coming out of uh, PixSock, if you will. And in means going in. So you'll see there. FMU out, vehicle status. If I deploy, see it immediately shows we're connected. So I'm going to delete that as I have it already implemented here. FMU out, vehicle status. That message is going to go into this function block and I'm just grabbing the, the nav state. So let's take a look at the uh, vehicle status PX4 message. I'll scroll, scroll down here. Let's find uh, nav state. Okay, so it's a UN8. That's the currently active mode. So if we go over to our dashboard, you'll see that it's set to 15. So it's reading from 
this topic, translating that, getting the nav state, passing that to the next node, which is this label, and displaying it here. So let's just uh, take a look at what 15 is. Okay, 15 is stabilized. Let's run one other test on my flow. I'll go back up and let's just change to hold. So for example, if I were to go look at the vehicle status message for hold, which is also a loiter, we would expect to see an integer of four on our dashboard. That's correct. So that means everything's working. Hopefully that gives a bit of understanding of how some of these messages can be decoded and displayed. I'll go ahead and deploy this. And let's run through this example on the dashboard. So what I'll do is try to put my SIDL environment and my node red side by side. Here we have a gazebo and I'm going to go from top to bottom. So I'll start the offboard heartbeat. That's going to be publishing at 10 Hertz. We're going to set offboard mode. You'll notice here that it goes to mode 14. Going to arm. We see the props here spinning. Let's initiate the takeoff command. Now, one thing I realized in testing, you might have seen that uh, there was a yaw to the left after taking off. And what I believe to be the case here is if we scroll down and we look at our takeoff, we can see our position as well as, let me see if I can expand this, our yaw set to zero. What we ultimately want to do as I mentioned earlier, subscribing to that local position topic, we can get the current heading and use that as our uh, yaw orientation. Otherwise, I think what's happening is that it's uh, yawing to an absolute coordinate, which uh, is not always what we'll want. So back to the dashboard. I'm going to now go right. The drone goes away from us because it's facing here to the left on my screen. I'll click left. We'll go forward. Back. And then finally, we'll land. So all of this happened by using the trajectory set point other than the land. The land, it's somewhat recommended based on the PX4 documentation to issue a discrete land command versus trying to, let's say, go in here and modify uh, the message to have a, a value of zero. So when you're navigating around in the air, obviously use this trajectory set point for, for offboard. But if you want to, to land, make sure that you issue the discrete uh, flight mode. So it talks about it here in the documentation. So operations like taking off, landing RTL, maybe best handled using the appropriate mode. So uh, I guess I'm somewhat guilty here that I didn't use a discrete takeoff mode. I just uh, sent the trajectory set point, but that seemed to work well. What I hope to do in my next video is take all of this, uh, connect it to Dexy, and we'll run through this example. So I'll wrap up this video. I know it was rather involved, but I'm going to uh, push this flow to GitHub, share it with you guys, as well as the links to the uh, Docker images. Uh, please feel free to give it a test. And obviously, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.